See how they play. We'll start off with a classic. So as you can see, it's just classic Pac-Man. It plays well. You might be able to hear the joystick. Joystick is a little noisy, but it's tight when you first get it. It wears in, breaks in, and plays fine. The one thing it's hard to tell on here, but when you get up close and see the screen, it's a little almost blurry, not completely crisp. And that's because it's the actual ROM being presented on a Wells Gardner Arcade flat panel monitor, which means the resolutions do not mix 100% well. There's no upscaling technology used. It's just, it just seems like it's the raw ROM being played on an LCD monitor. Now this is not a skills video. So I'm playing behind the camera, just showing to give an idea of what's on here and how it plays. Now the one thing, there's been some confusion if you look online, the joystick is a four-way joystick, not an eight-way. So that means it works great for games like Pac-Man, I'll kill myself, not so great with eight-way games. And I'll show you what I mean in the next game. So Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, Galaxian, Pac-Mania, Galaga 88, Mappy, four-way joystick works great for them. But when you get to a game like Dragon Spirit or Bosconian, it becomes kind of hard to play. You can kind of see the display, the flat screen with the, with the graphics technology. But look, up, down, left, right, no diagonals. I mean, this game's hard enough with an eight-way joystick. Now trying to play it with no diagonals? Forget it. It's, you can't even, it becomes almost unplayable. And that's unfortunate, but, well, that's unfortunate. They included Namco through in so many games that there's no way to have a joystick that works great with all of them. I take a beer. Beer break, that is. I'm trying to just kill myself. But yeah, the four way joystick does not work great for eight way joystick games. And there's a decent amount of eight way joystick games, but not too, too many. What is cool, some games that are included. King and Balloon, which is a rare early game. Pac-Man Plus, my favorite Pac-Man game, hands down. Dragon Buster, which is almost like a Zelda 2 Adventures of Link arcade version. Then you have Pac and Pal and Super Pac-Man, which is great. Dig Dug 2, Moto's Hopping Mappy, which is not really seen outside of America. It's Mappy on a pogo stick. You can adjust the speed by hitting the button and try to avoid the cats. It's actually a fun game. A little challenging at first. Again, not a skills video. Just reviewing the cabinet. See, when the snowman was waving for the combo points. Okay, so let's take a look inside the back of the cabinet. I took the back door off. So 
So right up in there, you can see the Wells Gardner monitor. And you can see the power supply. The, P <clears throat> the board and the connector which I haven't messed around with it but it does look like it might be JAMA. If it is, be curious what other games you can have hooked up in here. In the back is the fridge. When you fall down, got a fan, got the grounds. You also have the controls for the monitor. Pretty clean, pretty open. Okay, so 2600 here back. I had to switch to Jolt. But back with the summary, let me refocus. So overall, I'm gonna play a game while we do the summary, but overall, this cabinet was perfect for me. That doesn't mean it's perfect for everyone. I'm gonna cut the lights. Look at Romper, but it's not perfect for everyone. For me, I had no place for a new arcade cabinet. So my solution was this, a licensed legal multi-cab with mainly Namco games that use a four-way joystick. That's what I wanted. I know there's a whole bunch of games on the Pixel Bash, chill and the regular pixel bash that are eight-way games but for me it was more important to have a four-way joystick to play legit pac-man style games and four-way joystick games than having an eight-way joystick and trying to play four-way joystick games my solution is once this joystick wears out is to look into getting one of those switching joysticks that can switch between eight-way and four-way that's what's nice this is a actual arcade cabinet so if you're familiar with arcade cabinets it's pretty easy to adjust and customize especially when you open up the back and see how big and open it is now I have another video showing how wide open the inside is and specifically showing the Wells Gardner monitor the PCB that's hooked up the power supply and the extra cord for the fridge so if you're into the nostalgic arcade experience and you want real authentic arcade cabinets, this is not for you. Especially if you have the space. But if, you're, if you do not have the space to have your own arcade and you're limited to one cabinet and you don't want to deal with a main machine or unlicensed machine, you'd rather have a licensed cabinet, this is definitely the way to go, especially if you love Pac-Man. I mean, the fact that it has Pack and Pal, that was the big selling factor for me. So again, it all depends on what you're looking for in an arcade cabinet. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, it all depends on what you're looking for. For me, who cannot have an arcade in their basement, cannot have multiple classic Namco games, this fits the bill. Plus the fridge also covers that. So a little corner of an office and I have my mini barcade. But if you have the space and you have the time, this cabinet costs $3,000. $3,000 can get you plenty of real authentic arcade cabinets to fill up the space and a decent micro fridge for your beer. But again, if you're limited on space, to me, this is the way to go. So again, it's tough to give a final review because it all depends on what you're looking for. So I'm 2600. Be sure to check out our other videos and thank you for watching.